the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Today I'm going to talk about the link between the Jal and Masjid al-Aqsa. To understand this link, let us understand something very important. The surah that has to do with the Jal is which surah? Every Muslim should know this. The surah that has to do with the Jal is Surah Al-Kahf, right? We know that. The Prophet said, whoever memorizes the first ten, or the last ten, or I'm just repeating many different versions of different ahadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf every uh, Jum'ah, he'll be protected from the Jal, so on and so forth, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned. Surah Al-Kahf is the surah that is the surah about the Jal. Now, which is the surah that is connected to Surah Al-Kahf will tell you something about aspects, different aspects of the Jal. The twin surah of Surah Al-Kahf is Surah Al-Bani Israel. Let me share how these are interrelated, these two surahs are interrelated, so that when I go into my further discussion, it is understood that these two surahs inter are interlinked with one another. Surah Al-Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah, Surah Al-Bani Israel, or Surah Al-Isra starts with Subhanallah. From here on, I will just call Surah Al-Isra. So I don't have to say Surah Al-Bani Israel because it has two names, Surah Al-Bani Israel and Surah Al-Isra. So Alhamdulillah, Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Al-Isra, Subhanal, Subhanalladhi. Over there, Subhanal, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Anzala, Alhamdulillah for the one who sent down. Over there, Subhanalladhi Asra, but Subhanallah for the one who sent his servant up, who took his servant up. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Anzala Ala Abdihi, Alhamdulillah for the one who took his servant, sent down to his servant. Abdihi, Abdihi is used for his servant. Over there, Subhanalladhi Asra bi Abdihi, Subhanallah for the one who took up his servant. So you can see the Prophet says, Subhanallah, nifsul mizan, walhamdulillah, tamna'u. Subhanallah is half the balance, alhamdulillah completes that balance. So there's a relationship between Subhanallah and alhamdulillah, and you can see it in this surah. Over there it talks about the Quran coming down, over here it talks about the Prophet going up. Then this surah al Kahf starts by telling you that look, we are gonna, we're going to leave nothing confusing, we're going to give it to you the way it is. There is no crookedness in this. It's going to say what it is. To warn you of a great war, which the Prophet called Malhama in his Ahadith, Kitab al Malahim, the books, you know, Malhama means to butcher someone. So, Kitab al Malahim is the books in which the butchering of the human race literally is discussed. So, the first ayah of Surah Al-Kahf and the first ayah of Surah Al-Bani Israel are interrelated. The first ayah of Surah Al-Bani Surah Al-Isra, the one I was going to call, it's called both Bani Israel and Isra, as I mentioned. Subhana ladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. He is the one who took his servant from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa is mentioned in this surah uh, that talks about the Jal. And then it is mentioned again, the whole history of Bani Israel and, Mas and, the, and, and the area of Jerusalem is, is and, and the whole area of Jerusalem is discussed, and the whole history is discussed in Surah Al-Isra. And it is said in that second part, when the second promise comes to happen, which is what we're talking about here, I, I can't go into details of that right now, so that your faces will be humiliated. Then Allah says, They will enter into your masjid like they did the first time. So, the, the great wars happening, which is mentioned in ayah number 2 of Surah Al-Kahf, a great war will happen. And with that is the mentioning of Al-Aqsa in ayah number one, and then just in the same ruku, basically, the mentioning is mentioned that when the second promise comes, they will enter into, into the masjid to, to humiliate your faces. Then they will take over Masjid Al-Aqsa, they will destroy Masjid Al-Aqsa, and this will lead to a war that is of unknown proportions. Can you imagine 60 Muslim countries upset with the 
horrific act of destroying Masjid Al-Aqsa. This is what the Quran tells us in what will happen. Now, how exactly will it happen? What is exactly? We don't know that. We only know that there is a relationship and we know that there will be Malhama and we know it's connected to Masjid Al-Aqsa and we know that the Christian Zionists and the Messianic, uh, uh, the Messianic portion of the Jewish religion are in full speed to bring about the reality, to make a reality, to make the temple the reality. And unfortunately, they think the temple is where Masjid Al-Aqsa is, and it's not. And I have a chutbah on that. I don't want to go into that. But if they build a temple in the wrong place, it will lead to a world war. And you may be so. While there's so many things happening in the news, look. You have to look at. You can look at China. You can look at Europe. You can look at Russia. You can look at Syria. You can look at Arabia. You can look at Saudi Arabia. All those things are important. Particularly, particularly, especially those things are important that the Prophet told us and pointed to us. Specifically, those things are more important than the other things. There, you know, history is happening. But you have to keep your eyes on the things the Prophet told us and the Qur'an told us and one of the first things that a mu'min will have his eyes on is what's happening in Jerusalem and what is happening in Al-Aqsa. And in fact, I want brothers out there that are listening to me to make this their job. They're every day, every week, they're, they're trying to, and, and it, so that we can collaborate. We know what's going on. And so, I want to share with you some of the things that are going to, that have happened that are going to happen, that are being planned to happen. I want to show it to you in black and white so you understand the importance of an aqsa It's not about a Palestinian cause. It's about an aqsa It is, and, and even for the Jews, it's not about the Palestinians. It's about building their temple. And it'll become even more abundantly clear when I show you what I'm going to show you, inshallah. So let's start, inshallah, right away. Okay? If Allah wills, uh, you will stay with me and inshallah you'll benefit tremendously with this. Um, you know, so we'll start with this. Okay, I hope inshallah you can read this. Sharon touches a nerve and it, Jerusalem explodes. For doing what? Jerusalem exploded for what? For putting one cornerstone rock that represents the Temple Mount, the coming Temple Mount, okay? He ends by saying, Sharon's last words were, I'm sorry about the casualties, okay? Uh, and I wish the wounded a speedy recovery. But a Jew in Israel has the right to visit the Temple Mount. That is where Al-Aqsa is. Oh, and another thing I want to share with you, which is really, really important. All over the media, when you talk about Al-Aqsa, the picture they give you is the Dome of the Rock, okay? I don't know what they plan by doing that. But showing the Dome of the Rock, it's like when they finally blow up Masjid al-Aqsa or bring down Masjid al-Aqsa or take over Masjid al-Aqsa, they'll show pictures of the Dome of the Rock and say, see, it's still there, it's still there, it's the Dome of the Rock, it's still there. Because all over the media, there's maybe 200 pictures of Dome of the Rock and one picture of al-Aqsa. And maybe one brother should make this a project of his to make sure that pictures of al-Aqsa are all over the place so that Muslims don't get confused by this. You know, somebody needs to make this take on a project. And by the way, the other thing that I want to mention, which is just as important, is when the peace talks were happening with, with, between the Palestinian and, and Israel, when the peace talks were happening, in, you know they had the Barcelona Olympics in 1992, right, in Spain. And they had, they, you've never had an international conference uh, of any sort in, in Spain. You know, you have it in Geneva or some other place. Uh, never in, in Madrid, Spain, Spain, after 500 years after the fall of the Muslims in Granada, okay, you bring the Muslims to negotiate with you in Barcelona, in Spain, right at the 500 year mark. And then that's also when they had the Olympics. As if to tell the Muslims, look, this is your collective graveyard. Muslims were in Spain for 800 years, and now look, they're dead. They're gone. And this is what's going to happen to you if you don't negotiate with us and give us what we want. So, what does Ariel Sharon say? The former Prime Minister of Israel, I'm sorry about casualties and I wish the wounded a speedy recovery, but a Jew in Israel has the right to visit the Temple Mount. He said, the Temple Mount is still in our hands. See that? 
All right, let me also show with you some other things, okay? Plans underway for the construction of the third temple in Jerusalem. What they will not tell you, what they will not tell you, and I need to maybe show this to you, what they will not tell you is the temple mount is being planned, and is being planned where? Is being planned to be replaced this plan is being planned to replace Masjid al-Aqsa. Principle of statements. This is the Temple Institute. This is an institute that works in Israel to build back the temple. Okay, And if you go into the location, they'll tell you the location is Masjid al-Aqsa. Okay? And what is their statement? Here, watch this. Fish out of water. But we fool ourselves if we think that the state of Juda the state of Judaism today without the temple is normal. Uh, they forget that for two thousand years they didn't have the temple. But anyway, on the contrary, we are, we are like fish out of water. If one third of all the temple commandments center on uh, one third of all Torah's commandments center on the temple, see that? So they really want to bring it back. Then let me share this with you. This is the institute, the Temple Institute, okay? Among many others, okay? There's, there's a lot of these that are working on this project. Laying the groundwork for a third temple in Jerusalem, okay? Then, of course, there's been conflict over this issue, and that's just all to kind of like test the nerves of the Muslims, okay? Let me also, don't think it's only just the Jewish people. It is the Christian Zionists and in the Christian Zionists, particularly the Messianic Judaism. These are Jews who have become Christians and then, then Christians themselves wanted to establish the state of Israel. So the first step was to establish the state of Israel. The second step is now being done, which is to make Jerusalem the center of Israel. Then the third step after that is going to be, okay, now we need the temple, right? Uh, all right, over here, right-wing Christian uh, Jewish movement hones on Jerusalem Al-Aqsa Mosque. Okay, so this is what they want. This is now interesting. Jerusalem, Tel Aviv home prices prices down faster than a national average. Why? Why, why are home prices down in, in Jerusalem? And why are home prices down in Tel Aviv? I'll tell you why. Because... If, Tel, if Jerusalem will become the new capital, then Tel Aviv loses its, import, loses its importance. And if, Jerusalem, if Tel Aviv loses its importance because Jerusalem is going to become the capital, the, the prices are going to fall. But the prices in Jerusalem also fall because they know if they make this move, what will be the result of that? More chaos, more violence, more problems. So both the cities, the housing prices have fallen. Okay, and uh, over here, I also want to share with you, uh, okay, so I'll just leave it at that for now. So, now I've explained to you, inshallah, the relationship between Sultan Kahf and Sultan Isra, the war is coming, and Masjid al-Aqsa, and Allah says, wa, wa idha ja al when the second promise comes, so that your faces will be humiliated, meaning the Muslims. If you translate it, there's two ways to translate this. One of the, to, to humiliate your faces. They will enter into your masjid like they did the first time. They will enter into it and do to the masjid whatever they want. And when they do that, only one can imagine the state of the emotion. We all know how emotional Muslims are. You know, what, what happens when there's a cartoon of the Prophet? What will happen when you bring down Masjid Aqsa? These people, they want the war. They want World War III. They want a nuclear war. They want an Armageddon. And uh, so, you know, this is going to be a very problematic thing. And I want somebody in the Muslim world to make it their job to observe what's happening in Jerusalem, to observe what's happening with Masjid Aqsa, to observe what is going to be happening with the Temple Mount, because this is extremely important for us to understand how things are getting closer and closer and closer, and gives us a better idea of the timeline. So again, the Jal and Al-Aqsa are interrelated with one another. Okay, They are interrelated, 
if you study the Quran, they're interrelated with one another. So may Allah bless you. Please subscribe to us, like us, leave your comments, share this with your families and friends. Inshallah, Allah will give you the reward because you know when you bring when you teach Quran, there's a, there's a reward in that because you're showing how relevant Quran is even in today's world, right? How real Quran is even in today's world, right? So the Kahf and the Isra coming together, the picture that they paint is a picture that we're seeing before our eyes. And so this should be a source of iman for all of us, inshallah. So inshallah, share this with your families and friends. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Take care.